welcome. We're so excited about your film, The Pod Generation. This is, you know, this unique sort of quirky uh, social commentary slash sci-fi movie. Um, Sophie, how did the idea for this come about? Um, I think it came like 30, 13 years ago when I was expecting my first child and I have a dream journal and I'm writing all my dreams and I had incredibly strange dreams <laughs> and but this evolved uh, over the years into wanting to make a movie about motherhood and the commodification of everything and in this case the commodification of the womb. So I think it was a what if scenario. What if we're made redundant as women and we're our uteruses are not needed anymore by society, then what happens? That was, I guess, the premise. And the societal pressure, especially, I mean, there's so much pressure around motherhood and its many different aspects, you know, I mean, on every level, you know, oh, is your child in preschool by the age of three? Is there, you know, all these different things, (laughs) that pressure. Um, Yeah, Amelia, what what was it about, you know, your character's journey that really spoke to you that made you uh, wanted to portray it? Just honestly, everything about this script, everything about the script, the amount of layers that are within it, the amount of enormous ideas that are presented in a way that is so easy to digest and easy to watch and so easy to read in this in this beautiful script. And it it was just also so much about a woman's journey and a woman's story. And that was obviously incredibly alluring for me as an actor Um, and getting to work with Sophie it just I was like a dog with a bone with this I just had to do it I had to had to be a part of it it was yeah it's just one of those dream dream projects Rosalie your character is sort of the embodiment of a lot of the pressure that's exerted on on women like Amelia's character to conform to a certain way of doing things um what were you kind of looking to? What were you channeling there? Well, right, I was going to say, uh, you know, why did you want to do that? Because um, <laughs> it's a gift. Um, what was I channeling? A very business-minded lady who wants to be at the top of her game, but also sees a massive business opportunity in order to outsource the one thing that should not be outsourced is the womb, and 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 it, and it appeals, and it appeals because of the the beauty of it, because of the the ease that it offers women. And one of the arguments that I, I really love, again, from when we have the opportunity, like last night, to watch the film again, is that the fact that the women who are found, who are pregnant in the film are the women who want to have a pod instead. Yeah. And it's just the beauty of just the natural female body with a life inside it and then just putting it in a beautiful bit of plastic. I think really the encasing of that is how we are being encased as a society. I think it's it's saying a great deal about that. Yeah, I love the way that, you know, your character seems sort of nice on the surface and then at times will just be ferocious. Like there was this moment where someone pushes back at like a group tour you're leading and you're like, where are they? Where are you from? I was like, one of my favorite lines. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so passive aggressive. But I love yeah. the fact that it's just like she's just, you know, like high all the time. And then underneath it is just this mega bitch. She's just waiting to just slash through people and just go. All right, give me your money and I'm gonna stick a baby in there, but I don't give a toss about that baby. You know, I just want to rent it out. The rental womb, <laughs> rent my womb. Can we rent a womb? Rent a womb. Hi, well, we're here from rent a womb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's such an interesting commentary because I think it does speak to something that we've already seen happening, which is that we keep advancing technologically more and more. And yet emotionally, in terms of our maturity, in terms of, you know, what's equitable and just, we are not advancing nearly as fast as we're not keeping pace with the technology, you know, and. Was that a theme that that, that yeah. really you you wanted to express as a filmmaker, and that that you really gravita- gravitated to as yeah. actors? Yeah, Einstein said that you know when they enriched uranium and created the atomic bomb, he already said that those things that our mind is very inventive and we're able to create technologies and things, but we never measure the consequences. So we're so in love, and that's a human thing. We all do it. I think we're so in love with our creativity and our ability. And I imagine if you would spend time in the Silicon Valley, it must be like very uh, energizing to see so many creative minds and so many ideas. But then who is thinking about the ethical consequences of all this? Mm-hmm. You know, like the, the high tech companies that are ruling the world, their leaders have not been elected. 
they haven't been chosen to operate in a democracy. They're, and so they have a lot of power in their hands and they're deciding for humanity. Uh, so they should have, have some thought process in this. Um, so we've seen it like, you know, what was happened with Instagram of where a lot of teenage girls have committed suicide. And, and it, I'm not saying it's the fault of Instagram or, but those tools are powerful. And if we don't measure how addictive they are, chances are that they are, you know, dangerous to them. And we have to ask ourselves the questions at least, you know, instead of just going straight to the wall. <laughs> Progress, technological progress for progress's sake. Because we do it because we can. We must, and I think it goes towards the commodification. Commodification. Yeah. Thank you. Can't even speak at this point. <laughs> uh, the commodification of um, of our mental, physical, emotional, spiritual world of this kind of. We must keep moving forward. You must keep bettering yourself. There is no end. There is no final nugget of gold that you're waiting for at the end of when I just do once I've done this then I'm when I'll do that it's like this addictive kind of necessity that I think speaks to the way that we're living our lives as a society as a whole and there's no one checking it there's no one and and it kind of and I feel like it's polarizing so many people as well because you're either on the side of like nothing and I live in the desert and I don't have shoes or <laughs> that's a really extreme example or you're on the other side which is sort of where a lot of it and then we la we largely land somewhere in the middle going well this technology really helps me live my life and before you know it you're kind of in a very solitary world and that to me is the thing that makes me the saddest is that is the we saw it with COVID how profoundly alone we are. I think loneliness is something that you can be born with, but I think that all of the technology that we're doing, we think we're feeding that loneliness, but actually we're just making it worse. And so, to try and find a way where the biggest thing that we're pleased about now is getting to Mars. Just, oh, do you know what I mean? I'm like, surely someone just needs to like, just let's just 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 rise above. Let's just. Take a bird's eye view, shall we? Just <laughs> take Mars. a little overview from Mars and just think, <laughs> is that the thing though? <laughs> is it? Is yeah, it's it? hubris. The Greeks said it 2000 years ago, it's human hubris. And then what happened? Icarus, when he tries to reach the sun, burns his wings. Yeah, then we fall. Icarus. Because, but, we, but it's ingrained, you know, even yeah. us, I mean, yeah. we're, we're not better than anyone else. We're wired to always want more. And the biology always wants more like it's yeah. but then we should have some more regulation and philosophical debates and ethical debates about all this because we are conscious minds and in the film i think there is hope because this couple yeah. decide that mm. they don't have to be enslaved by their technology they can mm. also rebel and do it their way and uh, so i think it's complex i don't think there yeah. there is an answer that a prescription about how we should live our life, but I think we should be aware at least. Because technology isn't all bad, but there are yeah, medical no, no. advances that are making yeah, things course. better for people. But I just think having it checked. It's the unhinged relationship to it that is, I think, the I sort problematic. Of fetishization of yeah. it. Like yes, the, that's the yeah. word. The way that, oh God, it's such perfect casting. Jean Marc Barr, sort of your. <laughs> Elon Musk type figure <laughs> yeah. here. Uh, yeah. it, it, sort of, you can tell that there's just such a cult of personality around around that figure in, in yeah, the world yeah, of yeah. this film. And yeah, just I think when when we start thinking of those things more as like an end to themselves rather than like serving a purpose, then you know there could be some yeah, real it, issues. It's so. a new form of totalitarianism. So yeah. Orwell had a totalitarianism that was you know, designed on the Stalinian uh, or like all the dictatorship models. But the new totalitarianism is much more seductive and it's insidious. You're not aware you're being controlled. Mm, yeah. You're doing it to yourself through a device, exactly. but you're losing a lot of agency and freedom by doing so, especially for the children, because mm. the children that are being raised and born in the high tech world, don't we at least were pre tech our generation, but they don't have maybe the distance to understand what it, this is doing to their soul and mind and brain and but i think it's going to be regulated at one point yeah. it's going to be like in the 60s where we're going to say oh smoking was maybe not really um, great for you know yeah. those things i think we we also there is a sort of moral progress so mm -hmm. it's not all doom but i, no. I think the film is a satire it's not like a lecture but it's like at least let's laugh about it and also think about it <laughs> yes
thing that the film comes back to, though, essentially, is the one thing that you cannot generate through an, an app or technology is the love, is love yeah. between two human beings. And yes. ultimately, that's the, that you can't, you can't, False. You can't. You can't find it on a phone. You can't. You can't find Tinder. it by buying. Tinder. Sorry. Something. Yeah. Or you know. You, it's just. Yeah. Tinder. I mean, you might find love on Tinder, but it's not. Um, yeah. Not the same. Not the it's same. not the same. It's not. Oh, but yeah, yeah, I think. I think that that gives a great message of hope. That, you know, wrapped up Looking in the fact that you other. can. Yeah. You just human to human. That's what my COVID was so hard because you yeah. couldn't. You couldn't do that, and um, we did rely on technology then, and we were grateful mm. for it. But um, yeah, sorry, I'm just. No, <laughs> it's all about that, love. That, that, that's Come so on, well bring said. It back to love. Yeah. That's so well said. I mean, this is such an such a fascinating film and such an unexpected film in a way. It's not necessarily the film that you would think of as a follow up to an adaptation of Madame Bovary, or, <laughs> uh, or uh, you know, Amelia. In your case, I mean, you're associated with some very high profile genre projects. Yeah. Uh, I, I will give a special shout out to Solo, which is an underrated gem. Bless uh, your cotton socks. Thank you so much. You and my brother. <laughs> Apparently that's it. <laughs> it is a lovely film and it will be appreciated one day. Thank you. But um, truly, you know, this is such a, this is a genre film as well, but in a very different strain yeah. than what you've done before. Like, yeah. what about that really spoke to you? Well, honestly, at the moment, I'm feeling... Being completely honest, the thing that I want most for the rest of my career is to work with as many auteurs and filmmakers in the independent film space and be as creatively fulfilled as I possibly can be. And I've had access to some incredible experiences and been able to work with some astonishing people in film, in all areas of the, you know, the, the technology that I've been able to work with. I've been, I've been in films that are at the absolute forefront of that and that's been astonishing but now I'm finding myself reverting back not reverting back I'm finding myself yearning for more creative autonomy um, and um, and fulfillment and I think that this as a genre piece because it is because I I absolutely adore high concept ideas and material that's the stuff I really enjoy reading as well the kind of magical realism I think that's where the joy of art and storytelling comes into its own is when you're able to give someone a world that is not our own to explore incredibly big philosophical ideas and see how you feel about them and how that how you become how that relates to you as an individual that's what i think is the power of art that's what i think is the power of film and so to do as many of those as i possibly can moving forward would be excellent <laughs> So you're, you're saying that there's not you're not necessarily angling for a Kira miniseries, uh, Disney Plus as a spinoff. I mean, <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> that would be lovely. That would be lovely, really, really nice. I'm having a wicked, genuinely having a wicked time on Marvel. They're absolutely brilliant. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no I, I hear you. Though. I mean, there's it's such a personal vision here. <laughs> there's such a personal vision here, and and what it has to express is just so unique. And I think it's going to have a lot of people talking. And it's, it's the kind of film that, even though it's it's sort of a, a cracked mirror reflection of our own reality in a lot of ways that we're already kind of on this road. Good. It's so. not sci-fi. I mean, everything yeah. in there is yeah. almost already existing. Mm, yeah. For instance, the meeting with the HR director when she proposed to, you know, pay for the pod. Actually, a lot of companies in America are paying their female workers to freeze their eggs. They they give them a stipend for that. I think it's a strange message to tell a, a female worker, you know, go freeze your eggs and have a baby in 15 years when you'll be very tired at age 50. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you remain competitive with your male co-workers. Mm. I think the feminist message should be go have your baby and as a society and as a company, we're we'll here to support you, you yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like they do in the Great. Scandinavian countries. You know, they figure it out mm -hmm. and they're not less advanced than us in Nor Norway, in Denmark. No. They have fulfilled lives and they have children and they spend time and with their technology. children. And they have technology and they're really smart. Yeah, <laughs> they just do it better. So there needs, yeah. to be, there's, there needs to be more equality as well as, mm -hmm. yeah. as Soph is presented in the film. Yeah. And it's insidious because it's fake. I feel it's a fake feminist message being like, here, we're giving you a check, we're helping you, we're supporting you. Yeah. But is it really what the employee wants to do? Yeah. Maybe then it puts pressure on in the movie on this uh, female worker who feels 
maybe if she doesn't do the technology, she won't get the promotion. Mm -hmm. It's entering a really strange territory of coercion because then you're not, they say, are oh, you in control of your uh, body and your reproductive rights? But you're not. Mm -hmm. If your company is putting pressure, like you're, mm -hmm. you know. And even though she does <laughs> do what the company wants and she gets the pod, you know, when she brings the pod to work, it, it's- They it, don't like it. And they're like, they don't yeah. Like that. yeah. 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 This is a distraction. I was worried about the, but I was worried for you when you when you go away to have have the baby, and and then I'm thinking, my the way I'm tuned now into in this in our modern world, if we can call it that. I, I don't think there's anything modern about it. I think we're regressing. Um, but I was worried for your future. I started mm. to go, how is she going to make money? How is she going yeah. to support the child? They can't live in that place forever. Oh my God, what's she going to do? Because they can't live off a botanist salary, apparently. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could forage in the woods. Indeed. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, but yeah, so I was, I, I, that's kind of, it throws up so many different things. And, mm. and okay. the fact that oh, you're no, forced wait, you to need this to survive. You need that job to survive. You need that money to survive in order to live the life that you're yeah. used to living. The thing that is most frustrating about what you were saying about, about you, we were discussing about the HR and kind of giving you that like, well, we can do that. As a woman, we are trained to go, we've done something wrong. Yeah. 100%. What have we done wrong? You you read in between the lines and in between the lines are saying you're fired unless you decide to not have a child. You're <laughs> fired unless you decide to not be a mother right now. And I think it's mm. it's those that passive aggressive constantly sort of looking at your shoulder and going, is someone telling I feel like someone's kind of moving my arm without me realizing that it's being moved. Yeah. And that um, just gives you such low self-esteem. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs>